I know there's a lot of hardworking families in my home state of Washington who are doing their part, they're playing by the rules, paying their fair share in taxes, they deserve to know that everyone else is as well. Um, there really is no reason that an investor on Wall Street should be paying less in taxes than a firefighter in Spokane or a nurse in Seattle. And there really is no reason that companies making billions in profit should pay less in taxes than mom and pop stores across Washington State or across the country. It's not fair, and I don't think it's American. Um, we really need to close the loopholes and make sure that the wealthy pay their fair share. And we need to make sure they play by the same set of rules as everyone else. I just don't think that's controversial. Um, and yet some Republicans, as we know, have constantly pushed for bigger corporate handouts and bigger loopholes and giveaways of the, to the wealthy that they can take advantage of. In fact, the Trump tax uh, bill was chock full of freebies and handouts for those at the top, lined the pocket of Wall Street and loaded the national credit card with trillions in debt. And still after that debacle, when it comes to, came time to raise the debt ceiling under the last president, Congress did the responsible thing. We worked together in a bipartisan way to raise the limit like we've done so many times before and like we should do again now. The full faith and credit of the United States should never be held hostage to score political points, period. Now, in stark contrast to the Trump tax giveaway for the rich and wealthy, I'm very proud that Democrats were able to pass steps in the Inflation Reduction Act to help working families by lowering costs and leveling the playing field. And that included steps like making sure billion dollar companies who are paying at least the same 15% tax rate as small businesses already pay, taxing stock buyback schemes that enrich Wall Street executives and getting the IRS, as my colleague just alluded to, the funding it needs to enforce the law, close the tax gap, and make sure that wealthy taxpayers are complying with the same rules as everybody else does. And I should note that funding is improving com com customer support for everyone, making it easier for our constituents to get help, to get answers, and to get their tax refunds. What we're talking about here is common sense and basic fairness. You don't get to ignore the law just because you're rich. Those big billion dollar companies, I don't know about anybody else, but I never wanna see a list of the largest companies in America that pay nothing in federal corporate income taxes again. It is just not fair. Wealthy Wall Street investors, they should pay taxes and play by the rules, just like the hardworking people in this country. Everyday Americans, they should not be stuck footing the bill for billionaires who can pay lawyers to run circles around the IRS instead of paying their taxes like everybody else. So I'm really glad, Mr. Chairman, that President Biden has put forward a roadmap to help move us even closer to a tax system where everyone pays their fair share. And I look um, forward to hearing more from the witnesses today about how we can do that. Um, my question would go to Dr. Klossing and Dr. Yegan. The economic theory behind the Trump tax cuts was that cutting corporate taxes would rev the economy because these cuts would allegedly trickle down uh, to benefit workers. Well, it's been almost six years since that legislation was passed. Do you think the Trump tax cuts are working as promised? I'm happy to start. Um, thank you for that question, Senator, and I appreciate your earlier comments as well. The, the Trump tax cuts did raise deficits a lot. That's one thing we know for sure. If you look at the revenue uh, intake from both the corporate and the individual level, it's much lower than it would have been. If you search for positive effects on investment or on the economic growth, they're very difficult to find. Uh, research by the IMF uh, and by academics has looked through the time series, and it's true that those uh, tax cuts were passed during a time of very robust economic growth, and that robust economic growth continued. But you can't see an incremental effect of the tax cut on spurring investment. And that's particularly surprising because there was expensing provisions included as well as those massive corporate tax cuts. But I think one reason that we can point to for why it didn't have the any positive effects on investment or growth is that the companies that were really benefiting from this tax largesse are companies that already had more than enough cash on hand to undertake any worthwhile investment, right? So if you've got a company that's earning above normal profits and you give them 
an even greater return, they're not going to have any reason to, to take that and invest it. Instead, we saw record stock buybacks, and we saw a big run-up in the stock market in anticipation of that legislation. So really, the shareholders are the ones who benefited from that. Yeah. Dr. Yegan, you want to add anything? Yep. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman.